If your stomach is a growling, and you want to make something now man. Stop by Bachelor Kitchen. Episode 3. Easy Pear Tart in a Bowl. Hi, and welcome to Bachelor Kitchen. I'm your host, Kel, and this is my cooking show for regular guys. Um, let's get started by washing our hands. We're going to use them quite a bit today. A friend of mine gave me a beautiful pear yesterday, so I thought that we could make a easy pear tart in a bowl. is really ready to use right now so the sooner that we can get this made the better first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pear and I'm going to peel it and core it and then I'm going to dice it so I have <clears throat> peeled and cored my pear and I've diced it into about a half inch dice and to this we want to add some sugar so first we're going to start with the white sugar we're going to add two tablespoons of white sugar we're also going to add one tablespoon of brown sugar I've also got about a quarter a teaspoon of cinnamon measured out here and we're going to add that as well. Now we're going to add about two teaspoons of minute tapioca. We're just going to give that a stir. Oh, and we also want to add about a good squirt of lemon juice, probably about half a teaspoon. And we're going to give that a stir so that that can get together and start to meld. And then we're just going to set that aside. Okay, now we need to make our crust. I'm going to use my giant measuring cup today because it's great for this kind of thing. So what we want to do is we want to start out with a healthy three tablespoons of vegetable shortening. I'm using the Crisco baking bars. These things are really great because they make measuring really, really easy. So we've got our vegetable shortening. And to that, we're going to add a half a cup of flour. teaspoon of salt. I'm pouring with the wrong hand here. There we go. Now I don't have a proper pastry cutter so I'm just going to use my wire whisk to cut the, our dry ingredients into our shortening. And this is going to start looking like a mess, but it's actually pretty manageable. It only lasts for a few seconds. 
the shortening will get on the inside of your whisk, but if you just tap it on the side of your bowl, it comes right out because the shortening is really soft. So you just want to cut this in real well. The rule of thumb is, is that what you're going to see is that it's going to start to look like really fine breadcrumbs and you want to go past that stage. And basically, when, you, when it gets to looking like fine breadcrumbs, you get past that, it will actually, the crumbs will start to ball up on themselves again. And that's a good sign that you've done this enough. But the rule of thumb is, is that <clears throat> you can't do this too much. You don't want to see any little pills of shortening anywhere. And this is what's going to give you a really, really flaky crust. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I've gotten past the breadcrumb straight, the, where it looks like breadcrumbs, and it's the crumbs are actually starting to ball up on themselves again. So that's a pretty good sign that I've gotten this shortening cut into this flour and salt really well. So, now we need to add tablespoon of cold water. I've got some refrigerated water here that I'm going to use. The biggest mistake, now you just want to um, Bring this together with your fingers until it forms a dough ball. It's the biggest mistake I think people make with crust like this is they get it too wet. And then it becomes harder to manage. Okay, so you want to just make sure that that water is distributed well through your dough. And you're probably thinking right now at this point, okay, this is where the roller comes out and we start throwing flour around. Well, I'm going to tell you, we don't need no stinking roller. So I'm going to get my soup bowl that I'm going to make my tart in. It's right here. It's important that your bowl be oven safe. And I'm going to take the crust that I've made here. And I'm going to kind of roll it into a ball and then kind of flatten it out so it's kind of like a flat hockey puck. Put it into the bottom of my bowl and then I'm just going to shape it with my fingers and push it up the sides. Just pretend that you're uh, playing with some Play-Doh you can push the edges back down with your thumb to give you a, a nicer looking edge. We need to preheat our oven to 425. Okay, so we have our crust formed. And it's a little rustic on the, on the uh, definitely can say that, but uh, it'll work just fine. If you really want to, you can pull the roller out and make it really pretty, but you know, this is just a little thing for just me, so I don't really care what it looks like. I just care that it tastes good. Okay, so now we have our filling here. We're going to take our filling and we're just going to spoon it 
in Carrick Shell. The pears are really more important than the juice at this point. So if it comes to a choice between putting the pears in and putting the juice in, the pears win. It's important too that um, you just kind of you can kind of push it around, but you don't want to pack it down at all. And this is going to be plenty of pear for this bowl. our pear tart and what we want to do now is we're going to want to dot the top of this with some butter so get about a tablespoon of butter and then just cut it up into little pieces and dot the top with it And if you don't do this part, the yummy factor goes down dramatically. So don't forget the butter. And now we're ready for the oven. And like I said, we preheated our oven to 425. We're just going to stick this inside and we're going to set our timer for 15 minutes. And then we'll be right back. Okay, so it's been between about 15 and 20 minutes, almost 20 minutes now, so I want to check my crust to make sure it doesn't get too brown. And it does look like it's about as brown as I want it to get. So I'm going to take a piece of foil and just kind of loosely drape over this. Like that. And then I'm going to reduce my heat to 350. And we're going to continue baking for about 20 minutes. And then it will be done. So we'll be back. Okay, well it's been another 20 minutes, so our tart should be done. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. Here we go. And there you have an easy tart for one. It's a pear tart. You're going to want to let this cool for probably, oh, a while, say a half hour at least. So it looks like I could have probably used a little bit of less uh, filling. Um, my filling looks like it uh, verged on the overflow. Um, but that's okay, it's going to taste just as good. If it hadn't overflowed like this, once the pie cooled, or the tart cooled, um, you could actually just slip it out of the bowl and uh, put it on a plate if you want, and it would present well that way. Um, you could serve it with some ice cream or maybe some caramel sauce that we did from episode two. Um, and I guarantee you this is going to be one yummy, uh, delicious dessert for one or two if you uh, decide you want to share with somebody. So this has been episode three of Bachelor Kitchen. Uh, appreciate you watching. So uh, check back for new episodes and uh, hopefully we'll get something new up for you. Thanks again. If your stomach is a growling and you want to make something now, man, stop by Bachelor Kitchen.